Hello traders, this is Rich Derrick from TradeSite. I wanted to take a few minutes here and talk about the uh, AAII Investor Sentiment Survey results that came out this past week. They're, they're really eye-popping, and I have to admit, in, in 20 years of trading, I've never seen anything quite like this. So I want to talk about what the, what the numbers are and also the, um, the possible implications. The survey is a survey of, of uh, institutional investors, and what they do is they... they uh, Kind of, kind of say where the, what what their outlook is for the market six months from now. So what they do is they pull them and they, and they say they're either bullish, neutral, or bearish on the market on where the market will be six months from the time of the polling. In this recent uh, in this recent poll, we moved away some, from some fairly neutral readings to some very extreme ones with a lot of velocity. As you can see, the bullish respondents dropped by 16 percent which is the biggest move I've ever seen. There's only 19% now who are bullish on the market, where the market's going to be six months from now. The neutral column, which usually uh, is somewhere around 30%, dropped by 10%. Now, most of these uh, folks who dropped out of the bullish and neutral went straight to the bearish camp. Bearish camp swelled by 26%, up to 54.5%, which is usually what you see near a market bottom. This is a contraindicator. Usually when people are getting very, very bearish, that's when you're approaching a market bottom. When you get a huge number of bulls, that's when you're uh, approaching that euphoric and climactic top where everybody's already in the market and everybody's very, very confident the market's going to keep going. We're at new highs in the market here, but as you can see from the numbers here, we have kind of just the opposite of what you would typically see and this is really really uh, unusual we scroll down and take a look at, at what you typically see the long-term averages here you know are somewhere around 30 percent for all of the uh, all the, all the, camps, the bullish the neutral and the bearish and the changes from last week are just absolutely dramatic absolutely dramatic so let's uh, let's take a look at you know a, a longer term chart of the S&P and see what the implications might be in this chart will just highlight how unusual these readings are. All right, now here's a look at the uh, S&P cash index in the in the weekly time frame. I've notated on here a, a couple of instances where we've got these kind of extreme readings where we're approaching uh, a market turn. If, you, if I can turn your attention to the left of the chart here, back in. Um, February of 2011, we started to record this very, very high number of bulls. We're well over 50%. We're almost at 56% of the respondents being bullish. So there were a very few number of neutral and a very few number of bears. So everybody's on board with the bull call. So what happened here is the market ultimately topped out and then started to, to break to the downside. Then in uh, that same year later on in in uh, in August, we started to uh, really build up in the bear camp, and the bear camp started to swell. We got up very, very close to 50% of the recipients were bearish, saying the market's going to be lower six months from now. So what happened? The market actually reversed and turned back up. February of 2012, we recorded 51.6% bulls. People were very bullish about where the market was going to be in six months, and what did it do? It, it turned lower. Then in... Um, a little bit later in May of, of uh, 2012, we started swelling up with the with the bears getting starting to get a little bit well above the uh, long term average of 30 percent. We got got up to 46 percent, and that proved to be an inflection point. Now the other notable reading that we had was uh, in July of this year. I'm sorry, uh, in January of this year, and we had 52 percent bulls. And what that usually does is that that's getting pretty full. You can see we had this reading back here where we had the bull camp swell up and what did it do? It went sideways and then broke. This this reading here, we went a little bit higher but ultimately rolled over and broke to the downside. We had this reading earlier this year and we had this uh, dramatic number of bulls, very few neutral and very few bearish. And what happened? It kind of just arrested the advance for for a time but really didn't didn't produce any downside and actually we're, we're really obviously uh, Printing new highs with with pretty good with pretty good momentum to the upside here. Now the thing that really st sticks out 
are the current week's readings. We're at 19% bulls. I almost wonder if this is a misprint because this is, I've never seen this before. And this being a contraindicator means that there's plenty of room for people to get back into the, uh, into the bull camp and uh, ultimately make a top up. For now, there's, this implies that there's room to the upside, which is really highly unusual and kind of disengaged. And the one thing that we do have to be aware of is, is how rapidly these numbers are starting to move now. It used to be kind of a grinding um, move from one camp to another. Usually they would go from the bull camp to the neutral and then to the bear. But you saw from the first slide how aggressively they were moving from the bull camp right, right to the bear camp. So this could flip around, but I just wanted to point out this is highly unusual. I've never seen this before, and I'm looking forward to see how this plays out. And I think what you need to do going forward while doing your technical analysis also, especially when you're doing in your internal and intermarket analysis, is to make sure that you have this kind of figured into the mix. Is this setting the table for a dramatic squeeze to the upside in a parabolic move? Well, if you're going to see a move, parabolic move to the upside, you know you would not want to see a a, a, a very large number of bulls um, already there. Uh, so I have to say that this kind of cracks the door open. It perhaps sets the table for that, but time will tell. All right, folks, I just wanted to uh, bring this to your attention, and as always, thanks for listening. This has been Rich Derek for Trade Center.